take it, eh? Hey, you going? What do you know? He'll strike a light. Good day, good day. And how you go and just say good day, good day, good day, and you'll be right. Welcome to the Midweek End Times News and Trends Briefing as we share major events and what is happening around the world as it relates to Bible prophecy. Today's date is February 1st, 2017. As many new and what's going on, um, especially the last weekend uh, with the the new cycle with the executive order that President Trump uh, signed and which was designed to protect America uh, by putting in place better vetting processes for refugees, especially amongst those seven countries that the Obama administration has already laid out. But you see how so many people are in uproar over a decision to protect your citizens. Anyways, quite a few news reports that pop out of over this. Brett Bart had this report um, saying that the Islamic State supporters react angrily to Trump's temporary refugee halt. Islamic State sympathizers and militants predictably reacted angrily to President Trump's temporary halt on refugees while the government reamps its flawed security screening process. Brett Bart Jerusalem obtained access to correspondence posts in a closed chat group that utilizes the encrypted Telegram message service. The chat group serves as an internal Twitter for uh, sorts of uh, ISIS jihadis and sympathizers and has been used in the past to issue ISIS communications. They say that, quote, the madman Trump is ignoring politics, science, and culture, ISIS supporter uh, wrote in his associates on this particular Telegram app. Um, and so there's a lot of people just attacking, criticizing, protesting. In actuality, if people actually read the executive order, there uh, would have a difference of opinion uh, when you understand what it's about. Again, this ex executive order halts uh, visas for 90 days for immigrants and non-immigrants from Syria, Somalia, Sudan, Libya, Yemen, Iran, and uh, Iraq. The further, uh, they also suspended the entry of all refugees for 120 days, indefinitely blocked Syrian refugees entering and lowering the ceiling to 50,000 uh, for refugees allowed to enter the U.S. for this 2000 year, uh, 17 year. Um, but what you do see happening who are posed as refugees is where ISIS uh, and these other terrorists come in. ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and other terrorist groups have reportedly been seeking ways to take advantage of this uh, Middle East refugee crisis with the goal of infiltrating Western uh, nations. And again, we've had a, a report on this multiple times of the Islamic invasion and how they've taken over Europe. And you see the disaster uh, that has happened and what's going Going on there. I like how Franklin Graham and there's a couple other guys that I've, I'll mention in just a moment that I've posted as a response to this. And uh, this uh, report came out of Charisma News and uh, how Franklin Graham talks about how Christians should respond to this Muslim ban. It's not a Muslim ban. It's not a travel ban. So people need to get that out of their system and out of their heads that that's not what this is about. But the article talks about how President Trump has signed a temporary immigration halt from Middle Eastern nations. Many people in the United States exploded with wrath. Thousands gathered at airports to protest and offer aid to incoming refugees who were temporarily detained for extra screening. Media and enraged protesters called the freeze a Muslim ban, which sparked further demonstration around the country. In a time of turmoil, evangelist Franklin Graham offered these words of wisdom. He said, quote, there have been a lot of protests and discussions about President Trump's executive action on immigration. Some people have forgotten that the priority of the president is protecting the Constitution and the safety of Americans. That's exactly what President Trump is trying to do. Taking action to secure our borders had to start somewhere. Is it perfect? Maybe not, but it's a first step. As they work on solutions during the 90-day travel ban, 
Unfortunately, there have been some innocent uh, families caught in this time of transition, he said. The article goes on to say, I think that through the vetting process really needs to apply to people coming to the U.S. from all countries, not just seven. We have been sure that the philosophies of these entering our countries are compatible with our Constitution. If a person does not agree with our principles of freedom, democracy, and liberty, which we cherish, they should not be allowed to come in. With Without question, Sharia law is not compatible, he continued. But many believers are at loss of how to help or if how they should. They turn to Matthew 25, claiming that people who support immigration halt are turning away uh, uh, Jesus. Uh, Graham offered this insight. Some are also criticizing Christians who support the president's position on immigration, and I'm one of those being criticized, uh, as Franklin Graham stated. But we have to realize that the president's job is not the same as the job of the church. As Christians, we are clearly taught in some taught in the Bible to care for the poor and the oppressed. Samaritan's Purse, by the way, have been working in the Middle East for 30 years. They had privilege of providing food, heaters, blankets, coats, uh, shelter, plastic uh, for tens of thousands of refugees there and other places around the world. They just opened up a 55-bed uh, trauma hospital in northern Iraq where treating Muslims who were wounded by other Muslims and fight over Mosul. As Christians, we are commanded to help all, regardless of the religious background or ethnicity, like the Good Samaritan Jesus shared about in the Bible. Our job is to show God's love and compassion. I believe the best way to help is to reach out to those people in their own countries. I support the establishment of the safe zones inside Syria and Iraq. That would protect by the international community until the political solution is found. We need to pray for political solutions that would bring peace and allow them to return to their homes as they desire. And as we mentioned many times before, there should be these safe zones that is protected so they don't have to leave their countries. They're going to uh, develop a, a great place for these people so they don't have to be dispersed at different places around the world, which does create a big burden on these other countries and nations. Um, and the other solution is to deal with that government that's creating all these problems. Now, in response to this situation that's been developing, there's quite a few different uh, uh, reports that I um, agree with, and I think that they did a great job in um, answering some of the issues and the questions, like what Franklin Graham just did, as we just mentioned. I also like what Michael Brown posted. Uh, this came out of the stream.org, and he had this article on how five things bothering me about the response to Trump's executive order on refugees. And he lays out, you know, goes through a, a lot of these different Twitter um, responses. And uh, But he, he mentions how, first of all, the left's outrage are driven by hatred toward Trump, not because of the situation, but more of a hatred toward him uh, in, in, in particular. You see, secondly, he mentions the hypocritical concern. What about the slaughtered Christians uh, throughout the Middle East? So they're, they're being ignored uh, for all of this other stuff that's um, being pushed throughout the media. There's also, thirdly, he mentions there's nothing wrong with prioritizing help for uh, the Christian brethren. Again, they've been ousted. They have been uh, um, uh, not allowed to enter so many countries. They're pushing more of the Muslims, and very few, if any, Christians are going into these other countries um, as a refugee. Fourthly, he mentions there is no Muslim ban, as we mentioned before. And then fifthly, and uh, this is where I agree with him, um, along with all those other points. But uh, as one who particularly voted for him or as evangelicals, we don't need to defend Trump. Um, again, he's not on a pedestal for me. He is a man. He is the president. God's raising him up such as a time as this. Uh, but uh, we don't have to defend uh, everything that he does or even how he does it. Um, so again, he's going to make mistakes. He's not perfect. He's a person. He is, uh, but he is a man that uh, God has raised up such as a time as this. He's doing exactly everything that he said he would do, uh, from the campaign. There's another, um, 
response to this whole situation as well. It's a video that uh, Paul Joseph Watson uh, put out there called The Truth of uh, Trump's Muslim Ban. Uh, and he did, a, I think, a, a wonderful job of explaining it and kind of uh, just really uh, unpacking what the situation is as well. So we'll we'll have a link to that uh, particular um, uh, video, but also you don't see how the outcry when Obama did this um, same ban uh, during his time in 2011, but also how Obama even bombed five out of the seven countries uh, Trump banned. The media didn't care, and so there's a, a other reports that um, all this sort of stuff didn't even get mentioned. There's no outcry. There's no, you know, protest like it is now because the media and the um, Soros <clears throat> keep funding these protests uh, to continue to create division uh, and opposition within the United States. And uh, but again, uh, President Trump uh, to temporarily uh, prevent uh, people from these seven countries from entering into America to harm it, uh, to destroy it, and how people keep saying, well, it's un-American or unconstitutional, but they didn't have a problem when President Obama did the same thing. On a similar topic, and this is part of the reason why there needs to be a better vetting system, um, but there was a report that came out that talked about how ISIS finds success infiltrating its terrorists into refugee flows to West. This is what we've reported multiple times. The Islamic State has planned to infect refugees flows uh, to the West with mass killers, uh, and some has had violent success. The CIA last year uh, said uh, that the, the terrorist group official strategy was to hide its operative among the refugees entering uh, Europe and, and the U.S. via these human uh, flows uh, in out of the Middle East and North Africa. ISIS, as you know, is ISIL or ISIS, uh, Islamic State has inspired followers to commit atrocities in San Bernardino, Orlando, Florida, the Florida airport, and, and uh, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, scores of U.S. Uh, residents have been charged with or suspected to providing materials to support Islamic State. Some have left the U.S. to commit crimes of war in Syria and, and Iraq. And as President Trump places this 120-day ban on immigration uh, from what he would consider and what the reports have come to him, high-risk Muslim-majority countries, countries, um, the history of mass migration shows that some took part of the 2015 massacre in Paris as two posed as refugees from Syria and the Christmas time uh, truck carnage in Berlin. Uh, the two airport and metro attacks in Brussels last year had fought in Syria and gained entry back into Belgium. So this is one of those other reasons why there has to be better security in place so this doesn't happen. And it's happened throughout Europe because they just have an open door policy uh, where those countries that need to have better securities or you're not just just letting anyone into the country that wants to do you harm. On a separate issue, dealing with uh, Israel and, and Iran and uh, how uh, Israel's urging Trump, United Nations, to act against Iran after ballistic missile testing. They've been crossing this uh, um, the, the restrictions multiple times. Uh, this report came out of the Post and also Fox News carried it, how Israel's urging their world to take action after U.S. officials said that on Monday that it, Iran carried out a test launch of a medium-range ballistic missile over the weekend, seemingly in violation of U.N. Resolution 2231, which forbids Islamic Republic from carrying out such tests for a period of eight years. The United Nations Security Council is scheduled to hold an emergency meeting uh, on the test at the required request of the United States. The U.S. request came after Israeli ambassador told the U UN Danny Dannon uh, called for a meeting uh, saying of the test, this aggression is not only directed toward Israel, it is directed toward the entire Western world. Uh, again, the agenda of Iran continues to push forth, wanting to destroy Israel and also the United States. And then lastly, on an apostate watch, this report came out of uh, Charisma News, how Lutheran Church votes in favor of same-sex marriage. 
Norway's Lutheran Church voted on Monday in favor of a new ceremonial language which will allow its pastors to conduct same-sex marriage, bringing into line several other mainstream uh, Protestant denominations abroad. Last April, the annual conference of the church, which uh, nearly three-quarters of Norwegians said in 2015 they belonged um, and they backed the principle of same-sex marriages, but didn't agree in its wording. Monday's decision involved modifying the marriage text to make the gender neutral, removing the words bride and groom. So kind of replacing what the Bible talks about in marriage. And uh, the new liturgy uh, came into effect on Wednesday. And so 2015, the French Protestant Church allowed gay marriage blessing, while the U.S. Presbyterian Church approved uh, the change of the wording of the Constitution to include same-sex marriage. And uh, Norway uh, has now become the second country in the world after Denmark to allow same-sex registered partners in 2013, uh, to, uh, 1993 and allowed same-sex civil marriage since 2009. Some 73% of Norwegians members um, uh, of the Lutheran Church in 2015, according to National Statistics Agency. The number has gradually declined in recent decades. So we do see, especially in these end times, how people are not grounded in God's word. And you're going to see more and more churches and more and more people falling away who do not keep their eyes on Jesus or hold the word of God as um, the inspired um, word of God. And uh, they're, they're, they're wanting to please men uh, versus God. And this is one of the biggest shifts that have happened in recent years, that people are more wanting to please the culture, please um, people versus uh, what does the word say? You know, what does it mean to please God? And they will compromise on these foundational principles and truths that the Bible has clearly stated and laid out. Um, but this is going to happen more and more in these end times, in the last days. That's why we need to continue to keep our eyes on Jesus. We need to stay in the Word. Uh, we need to be praying for these people that they don't compromise. And pray that we wouldn't compromise and, and uh, drop our guard. Uh, we need to always be living and walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit, um, filled with His Word. And just that we would... Uh, be salt and light in this dark world. People are looking for hope. People are looking for leadership and guidance and, and where they're not there's not going to be hypocrisy or compromise. So that uh, concludes today's update. Uh, may the Lord radically and outrageously bless you. Until next time, God bless.